Good day, everyone. Today we will be discussing a new program in the Garotic ecosystem named Ticker. The name isn't very illustrative of the usage. The program at this point is designed to create nuts and bolts, but at some future time may have modules added that allow the name Ticker to make somewhat more sense. The architecture of the program is the result of trying to learn something about current video coding techniques during the pandemic, so you'll have to excuse me for its rather strange design. The program contains only two modules at this point, one for making quick, simple bolts, and the other for more complex shafting with things like bearing races, multiple threads, and as you can see on this screen, joiners in order to join short sections of thread together or just short sections of shaft. One of the more ubiquitous things on the model download sites are bolts. You can find them everywhere. You can get them in many designs and all the bolts, all models are parametric, so one might wonder why this program was even necessary. Uh, but for myself, I was looking for a new way to get exactly the bolt I wanted, and in various forms that I can't necessarily download from a site. Things like two start bolts and nuts that I could form a bit better, and this program appears to fill that desire. I've printed well over a hundred various threads, nuts, bolts, and shafts since I started this project, and I think I can see a real benefit to hollow bolts with a metal shaft pushed through them for strength. Uh, they're hard to snap, they get more shear strength, um, and if you're going to use a bolt for either decorative purposes or perhaps in a jig for uh, uh, a good pitch of move motion per rotation, these things can be quite useful. They are at least a great decorative way to put lit, lightweight large bolts into a art project that look quite real. Once uh, spray painted silver, you'd swear that these things weigh a ton, but uh, they're very light, of course. Okay, with all that having been said, um, let's take a look at the program itself and the things that you need to worry about when you go to use it. It's very simple, and uh, this isn't going to take long at all. First of all, when the program starts, you are presented with a leather-covered table, the one on the screen, the uh, shaft I built myself a minute ago. This leather table will change in size depending on your bolt in order to give you a better viewing screen. There are only a couple of controls. You uh, can click your right-hand mouse button and move your mouse to tilt things around. A double-click, as usual, will take you to a flat-in view of a good uh, zoom distance. Um, the table is always one-half inch thick. So if you look at this table at the moment, you can judge how long that shaft is by the fact that this table is half an inch thick. Uh, incidentally, as another point, this program is in millimeters only, as STLs and solid models for 3D printers have no units to them. I figure everyone is capable of scaling by 25.4 either way, and it reduces a lot of complexity by getting rid of all of that standard uh, inch and foot nonsense. So millimeters it is, everything will stay that way. Um, let's start by looking at the way we can build a simple bolt, uh, because that's the fastest module. Uh, before we go there, there's a few examples of some of the things that I've printed in the last couple of weeks. And you'll notice the one sitting on the very front with a brass rod going through it is the one that you just saw on the screen. It's parts plugged together with crazy glue, a shaft is wetted with crazy glue and then just shoved right down through it. And I haven't yet cut off the brass rod. Um, but it gives you an idea as to the scale of the things that I've been printing. Large bolts are, of course, easier to print. Uh, but if you're making a woodworking jig or something, and you need something that moves reliably, uh, say one millimeter for every rotation of your handle, uh, these types of shafts can be a great thing to have. All right, so here's a refresh restart of the program. You can see our leather table, and as I said, it's always a half an inch thick, so you can see because there's no model, it has sized itself to what it figures is appropriate. If we look at the top of the screen, uh, we have two operations we can use, simple bolts and complex bolts. This slider underneath is simply for the material that's going to be used to make whichever uh, bolts that you might make, and it's just there again because of the experimentations that I've been doing. Um, but I left it in so that you can get a, a more pleasant visual appeal to your objects. So let's take a look at the first one, which is simple bolts up here. And here you see that you can select any of a number of standards of bolts. Some are metric, some are imperial. If you select an imperial bolt, you can certainly make it, but it will come out in millimeters. That is to say, it will still fit its 
imperial specification, but the model itself will be expressed in millimeters. Once you select a thread type, it's as simple as selecting the size of your thread. An M1 would be very small. You'd need an SLA printer if you were going to print something that small. Um, more decorative items would be more in the M20 range. For most of us with FDMs, it's easy to print something from 20 upwards, I've found. The nominal length is the length of the uh, bolt overall. The grip length is how much of that bolt is threaded. You can add a hollow for a rebar if you wish and set the diameter of the rod that you're going to push into one of these things. You can set the number of starts, two start or a three start bolt. Uh, you can select left handed or right handed bolt. You can select the type of head. It doesn't have to be a hex head. It can be for example a socket cap, cap or a ball end. Um, same thing with the nut. With the nut you can select either a square tubular or a spherical nut. Uh, in order to get your bolt, all you have to do is hit apply. The program will make it and bring it up on the screen. So here's our cap head bolt. It's got a five millimeter socket in it and it's made of marble, which, well, I defy you to make one in marble. Okay, so that's how easy it is to use the uh, simple bolts pattern, uh, simple bolts program. Up here on the screen, you'll see we have export models and export monolithic. Now, if you were to export monolithic, this will come out as one model with a nut on the threads. Um, this worked quite well in FDM printing. I find if I set my 3D printer to do zigzag supports and to not support any overhang less than 80 degrees, um, that it will print these standing up on end, and when they're done, you can simply screw the nut off of the uh, bolt and you have a working pair. Uh, many of you will have your own tricks for three, how to 3D print these objects, I would imagine. All right, let's... Uh, oh, if you select export models, they will export as two different models, the nut and the bolt. All these models are exported to a shafts folder, which is off the main directory. You can change that folder, uh, and I'll show you how shortly. The only other button on the screen is STL or OBJ. If you check it, you will get an STL output from either of the exports. If you don't check it, you will get an OBJ file, which is a wavefront file. This can be loaded with Cura or uh, MeshLab or Blender. Any program which can load an OBJ will load those OBJ files. I do not include the textures and send them out. These textures are not normal. They're uh, uh, they're quite complex and they can't be stored as a simple texture um, for you to use in some other purpose. Uh, so this is only for display. All right, so that's done. Um, we can take a look at how to create a shaft. I'm going to pull up complex shafting here. And now we switch to a different type of uh, GUI. Um, the user interface here is something called an intermediate mode GUI. And they're used oftentimes in video games. And what I'm trying to do here is thread the needle between CAD technology and video game technology just to see what I can do as an experiment. So this is our drawing screen, but we don't actually draw in order to create a shaft. What we do is we pick from six so far selections. So for example, if we wanted to um, build a shaft similar to the one I showed you as an example, I'll say add shaft by clicking the add shaft button. And you'll see the second I do that, the menu changes. Now we have a steps listing showing one object, a shaft. And this is the shaft here. Um, it's got these lines on it because it's hollow. If I uncheck hollow, you can see that this is just a section of shaft. Your mouse wheel will zoom. A double click will always fit the screen to the, uh, to the drawing. So here we have a shaft, and as long as we're clicked in selecting this shaft, we have its variables. We have a length, which we can increase or decrease. Incidentally, if you hold the control key and click on any edit box, they become typable. So I can type exactly 12.5 if I'm creating a half inch bearing race, for example. And now let's add another length of shaft to that, but let's take this shaft the second one and make it a little larger with the diameter and we'll just bring that out as an example. Now using your mouse you can click back to the first shaft and change various things about it or click to the second shaft. So whenever you click on a section of your shaft you will be taken back to its variables so that you can change various things. 
you can, for example, click a radius corners button and get a radius to joins that you make. So onto this, let's add a thread for the heck of it. Now I was selected onto the first shaft when I did this, so the thread injected itself before the third shaft. It injected itself into the middle. That was a mistake on my part, but I can cl click delete current section and it would go away. And now by clicking on the last shaft and hitting add thread, it goes into the proper position. Now the thread that I have selected here is a metric M20 thread. And it's the coarseness of the thread that's going to be most important to you. Um, this is a 2.5 millimeter pitch, um, which is considered coarse, and it allows for a nice deep thread. If you're 3D printing, deep threads are your friend. Uh, I do have several printed with very fine threads, and they do work, but they're more finicky to print. So you might want um, fairly coarse threads. The M20 tells us it's on a 20 millimeter um, die, but that doesn't make any difference to us. We can just simply change the diameter by dragging it out to any size that we wish. The length of it can also be adjusted outward or back. Uh, pitch angle and so on, you're probably better off not changing, but the major diameter and length and so on is no problem. If you should wish a nut to fit onto uh, any section of thread, you can check the box, add nut. And as you can see, a nut appears. And this takes me to one of the most important settings that you're gonna have. It's remembered from use to use, and that's up here, clearance. Clearance for mine is 0.32 millimeters. I find that this allows me to print a shaft such as this and just screw the nut off. It's a very nice fit, it's very comfortable. If I'm holding the bolt and I spin the nut, it will spin on its own for an inch or so. So uh, for me, 0.3 is a good number. It may not be good for you. You may have to slide this back and forth until you find the setting at which that nut uh, can screw on and off with no problems. Uh, further nut, you also have the distance between flats, so this would be the size of your wrench. So if we want to have a 50 millimeter wrench, for example, we can hit the control key, click on nut flats, and type the number 60. And there we go. Now when you move the clearance around, you'll see its effect. And you can see it moving out as I move my clearance back and forth. So that gives you an idea of what clearance is doing. Again, for me, 0 0.3, 0 0.33 or so is that is just perfect. So um, the next thing that you should probably be aware of is the joiner. A joiner allows you to print a short section of shaft and plug it into the next section. This is very handy because you can do such things as uh, print 10 or 15 two inch sections of thread of a shaft length that you know you can plug together at will, so you can build any length bolt you want, just plug and play like Legos. Uh, to do that, we just hit Add Joiner. Now, we don't have to print a next section. It is possible to print a strange thing like this just with a joiner on it in preparation for plugging into another one. Uh, but we can also just continue. And if I hit Add Thread, it will join the two threads together. Threads always begin and end on a pitch. This is so that they'll always plug together and the nut won't see any difference as it slides across them. Now for the end of a shaft, you have several choices. You can add a head, you can just add a bearing race, uh, you could do something weird like add a sphere. Uh, perhaps you're making something which you want to put into a ball and socket, for example. And that's all it takes to make a shaft. Now you can save these shafts with the save button up here. And wherever you save the shaft will be your next location for um, where your outputs will go. I'm not going to save that because mine is set to a special folder. So this is how you change your default directories with the save command, direct it to any folder you wish, and it will use that from then on to save your 3D models. You can load shafts, of course, or clear what's on the screen because this stays on the screen from use to use, just so you can experiment. To create these, you hit the create shaft button up here in the corner, and when I do that, you'll see an interesting thing. The old bolt disappeared and the new one appeared. This program will only allow you to be working on one bolt at a time or one shaft at a time, uh, but you can go back and forth and modify them. So here we have some weird sort of um, ball hitch with a pluggable shaft with a nut on the end and a bearing race. Completely useless, but kind of a cool looking object. If we hit export models, 
we can see it's putting out automatically shaft zero, shaft one, shaft two in order of the number of pieces and whether or not it has a nut. And it went into our shafting folder. Uh, that 3D model is usable by uh, pretty much any 3D printer you might find. And that's it. That's how easy it is to use complex shafts, simple bolts, and to get, get STLs and stuff. Uh, it's a simple utility, um, but it's probably very useful to have if you have a 3D printer. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun with it. See ya.